Hi, how are you doing this evening? Welcome, welcome to whoever had an opportunity to come out and just to, uh, just a short word, a short worship. That's what we're doing today. This is Larry Watlington and my lovely wife, uh, Ada, who is on the, on the production side over here. She's running things. But we just wanted to, on this Thursday evening before Christmas just to come and just to present just a little bit with you on Facebook tonight. And we're also on YouTube. I've got some new software so we can stream in two places at the same time. Father God, we come into your presence tonight with thanksgiving. We enter your courts with praise. Why? Because you are great. You are greatly to be praised. We thank you for just everything that your hands provide. Father, today we just lift up so many before you that we know are either sick or having problems, or having health issues, depression, whatever it may be, we in the name of your son Jesus, we know that you are greater than anything that, that we deal with. So we offer it up to you, Father God. We leave it at the foot of the cross as we come before you today, thanking you for everything that your hands have provided. We honor and bless you today through the precious, precious blood, a living sacrifice, of your son Jesus. Amen. Amen. You know, as we go in, uh, we just what, a couple days, few days from Christmas, right? And we're going to talk about a subject how do we honor um, the intent of Christmas? But before we do that, you know, I always have to get into a song. This is a song that we wrote, and really it was based on uh, Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. And I'm going to read that. I've got my King James right over here, and it says, <clears throat> Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Which is interpreted God with us. Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son. Tell 
tell the world, a dying world, that God is with us and death won't prevail. I know the grave, it can't prevail, and sin will never condemn us. This is my son in whom I'm well pleased. He's Emmanuel, Lord of Lords and King of all kings. Oh, he's Emmanuel, Lord of Lords and King of all kings. How many of you know he's Emmanuel, Lord of Lords, and King of all kings? Amen, amen. All right. I'm going to get my wife to take a little bit of that reverb off this mic. All right. She's figuring it out. There you go. Okay, now let's get into the teaching. Okay, we talked about Emmanuel. Now, this time of year... It's a special time of year, it is. Christmas, the holidays, uh, and there's so many things associated with this time of year that I think sometimes we lose sight of the meaning of what is Christmas. And I know this may sound like, you know, I'm teaching from a Charlie Brown, you know, Linus reading, but that, he, they nailed it. They nailed it, you know. Mr. Schultz nailed it when he wrote that. So how do we honor the meaning of Christmas? Let's think about this. Now, we're going to approach this kind of from a a world perspective, a worldview. You're like, what? Yes, from a worldview. Here's what I mean. Honoring a day, okay? Now, Paul, the Apostle Paul in the book of Romans he, um, he writes about this because Paul is helping the people in, in, in the New Testament churches to break free of bondage and, and to break free of a lot of the, and to, and, and to understand how to use liberty, but use it in a right manner. Because thank God for salvation, we have liberty. We are not bound by, by an endless list of rules and regulations because we have liberty, but because of that liberty, we choose to serve a risen Savior. So here in, in Romans chapter 14, verse 5 and 6, let's take a look at this. It says, one man esteemeth one day above another, another esteemeth another day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. That's a, that's a sermon right there, his, in his own mind. He that regardeth the day regardeth it unto the Lord. He that regardeth not the day to the Lord, he doeth not regard it. He that eateth, eateth to the Lord, for he giveth God thanks. And he that eateth not to the Lord, he eateth not and giveth God thanks. You see, it's all about giving thanks to the Lord. How, you know, whether I celebrate Christmas, I don't celebrate Christmas, I celebrate New Year's, I don't. I, as long as we are giving thanksgiving to the Lord. Now here, let's take a look at this for a second. A lot of days we honor, right? On the third Monday of Jan January, we're going to celebrate Martin Luther King's birthday. You know, in November, uh, the 11th of November, we always celebrate what? And honor Veterans Day. And, and, and I'm going to throw some couple more up here, right? That you may not be used to. Like Malid. Malid, that's Mohammed's birthday. So if you're Muslim, you know, if you're is, you know, from the Islam, you know, you will probably, you know, honor and reverence this day. Let's say if you're Buddhist, you know, Vesik, uh, Visek, I'm sorry, may be a day that you honor. That's the first full moon in May because that's a time when they're honoring Buddha. Okay. And you're probably going, what in the world does this have to do with Christmas and the season we're in and what you're trying to talk about? Well, let me show you. Because we all don't have a problem honoring the intent of those days. Here's what I mean. We can disagree with every war the U.S. have ever fought. 
whether it's Vietnam, Korea, World War I, World War II, Grenada, uh, Desert Storm, it doesn't matter. We can, we can completely disagree with everyone. However, we would never deny the purpose or intent of Veterans Day. Just because I dislike or disagree with some conflict, it has no bearing on the intent that we have for a Veterans Day, that we honor veterans. Likewise, I say, I am not Muslim. I'm not Muslim. However, I would never downplay that Malid is based on the birth of Mohammed. I am not going to celebrate that, but if that is the intent, that's the undergirding factor of this, of this day. If you're Muslim, you, you celebrate because of that. Or imagine this, and you know, let's say in, in 50 years from now, someone said, Martin Luther King did not really live. There would be outrage, rioting in the streets, right? Why? Because, yes, we know that he did live, and that's the purpose and intent of that day. And I know there are people, I remember when the holiday was passed, and there were a couple of states who didn't want to pass it, and there were, uh, you know, weeping and gnashing in the streets, you know, in Arizona, a couple of different places. However, the fact that I may disagree with how I'm going to celebrate this, it had no bearing on the fact that Martin Luther King was a human being who did a lot for civil rights, and this was a day that we established. Now, I know some people say, well, with Christmas, it is not really on the 25th. So what? We don't celebrate Martin Luther King's day on his birthday. His actual birthday is a different day. Likewise, when they celebrate uh, Mohammed's birth isn't on his actual day. So don't get caught up into, well, the 25th, he was probably born in October. Losing perspective of what this is about, the intent and purpose of the holiday. So why would anyone want to dilute, the, you know, water down the purpose and intent of Christmas. Doesn't make sense, does it? Regardless of what your belief system is, has zero to do with your belief system. Because, here we go, my belief system isn't grounded in Islam. However, I would never argue the intent of this day. The intent was based on the birth of Muhammad. So even if you are, whatever your, 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 your belief system may be, we should never dilute the purpose and intent of Christmas. I think here, this is, it, <clears throat> my opinion, how we get here. How do we get here? Why versus how? And if anyone has been around me very long, you know, I always go back to this one word, why? People who know why will always tell people who know how what to do. We spend a lot of time on how, not enough time on why. We know how to do church. Do we know why? We know how to shout and speak in tongues. Do we know why? So let's look at this holiday, this Christmas, from the same perspective. The why of Christmas must never get lost in the how. And you're probably saying, what you talking about, Willis? Here's what I'm talking about. Regardless of how you choose to celebrate, you may be a Santa and reindeer Christmas person. You know, that's your thing. Santa Claus, reindeer, and all the things that, you know, jingle bells and all those things. Not a problem. You may be one that says, well, Christmas is about spending time with family and friends. And doesn't that feel so good and warm and squishy? It's just about the family. Oh, bring the family together. It's Christmas. No. Think about the outrage. If I said Martin Luther King's birthday is about family. It's just a time to bring family together. Veterans Day, well, it's just a time for family to come together. No, that is not the intent of either of those. Not saying you can't come together as a family on those days. Now, you might be a, a professed pagan and you gather around the Yule log. Yes, for the ones who, don't, who may not be fully uh, vetted in paganism, Yes, Yule, Yule tie, that all comes from pagan religions. There's a long history about that. However, it doesn't matter. It does not matter the how. Santa, family, friends, we're dancing around the Yule log with our Birkenstocks on. It doesn't matter the how. What matters is this, the why. The why of Christmas is to honor the birth of Jesus Christ. 
That's why. Let's not lose that. And what I will ask you, as you, as, as we, all of us, you, me, everyone, who, who believe this, enforce this in the circles that you travel in, with your families, you know, while you're ripping open gifts underneath a fir tree that probably came from some pagan religion, doesn't matter, because at the end of the day, take the time to explain, this is the why. How we are celebrating it, we, we may need to look, you know, relook that. I don't know. That's that's your personal things. Never lose sight of the why. This is about Jesus's birth. Period. No different than Martin Luther King's day is about honoring Martin Luther King, not just so we can go shopping and, and get good deals on linen, and and bed spreads at, at, on Amazon. You know, that's what President's Day has come down to, right? Oh man, they got sales. But no, don't lose the intent. The intent here, the why. Never let the why be overshadowed with the how. I had someone tell me once at work that, yeah, we're, we're not baby Jesus Christmas people. We're Santa Claus people. I said, wait a minute. We would not do that with any other holiday. Understanding the why. Now, to really, I think, <clears throat> to galvanize, you know, to solidify the purpose or the why, we have to go to Luke chapter 2. And we're going to do some reading because I think this, story, this, this, this series of events is so important. Luke chapter 2. We're going to go from verse 1 all the way through verse 20. Okay? And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augusta, that all the world should be taxed. And this tax was first made when Serenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, each one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. To be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, an angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothing, clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven. The shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all that, that heard, all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. I love this verse right here. But Mary, oh, but Mary, kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. That's Christmas, a savior 
For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government shall rest upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. That's Isaiah 9 and 6. So don't let anyone steal the purpose of Christmas. Hold everyone to task to honor the meaning of Christmas. Regardless of how they celebrate Christmas, hold them to task on the meaning, the why. Not just Santa Claus, not just reindeer, not just food, not just family, not just friends, but it's the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you today as we honor you, as we honor you with our lips, as we honor you with our song, as we honor you with, with our, our, our spoken word, let it all be done for the glory of God, for the glory of your son, Jesus, that he will be lifted up. And when he is lifted up, he will draw all men, all women, all children unto him. For it is you, it's you, is why we are celebrating. It's you, Lord, not just to have some time off work, not just to have a vacation, but it's about you. It's about the birth of our Savior, that that message will never be lost, that we will carry the guide on, that we will carry the marvelous light of the message and the intent of Christmas right into the middle of whether it's a pagan world or if it's a, a world that have, have lost sight of, of, of reality, what, whomever it may be, or just ones who wants to fulfill the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life, we carry that message that the message of Christmas is Jesus Christ. We honor you today. We bless you. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining us tonight. I hope and pray that your Christmas will be fulfilled with all that God has to offer you, Father. We just honor him, honor him, honor his son, honor Jesus today. No different than Martin Luther King or Veterans Day, honor Christmas. This is Larry Wallington and Ada, my wife, for simplicity of the word, and have a great Christmas. And